Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are adding another video in the miscellaneous series. In this video, we are going to talk about how exactly we can introduce the effect of rotation without incorporation of moving mesh. This video is going to be helpful because in some of the cases, you can actually introduce the effect of rotation or centrifugal force without incorporation of moving mesh and that actually makes the simulation uh, simulation more robust in the sense of computational time and also the convergence because in most of the cases if you use moving mesh the convergence issue arises so let us go ahead and just demonstrate today's topic so here we choose 2d axis metric and then we'll be introducing turbulent k epsilon model because will be incorporating a higher centrifugal force so the Reynolds number in the fluid flow will go beyond uh, 3000 and that's why we need to introduce this K epsilon model so just we take it and let's say we work in stationary or unsteady physics now let us work in meter itself that means the geometry dimension let us keep it in the meter and let us take a rectangle say a rectangle of height 0 0.04 and width say somewhere 0 0.02 so we create this particular rectangle and let's just assume uh, this is the half of the rectangle because we are using axis symmetry so this is the axis symmetric line so what we have is this is the half portion of the entire geometry so we have to mirror it and combine those two to have the accurate or original diagram now <clears throat> what do we do let's assume at the middle we have a blade so let us try to create half of the blade for that what we can do is we can just take another rectangle so we duplicate it and say take a rim of rectangle here say that rim will be of height 0 0.03 and say width would be around 0 0.002 yeah let us keep uh, let us push this to the top so z would be 0 0.01 we can make it little bit less height say 0 0.025 and make it 0 0.015 yeah this is perfect then what we do is we choose another rectangle so we make a duplicate of it and say we want to create a rectangle here so say the rectangle will have a dimension of say width would be very less say 0 0.002 itself and height also say 0 0.002 just create it and let's make the width double yeah that is perfect and let us keep it at this position 0 0.013 like this now what we do let's uh, just visualize this one as the blade half of the blade if we mirror it we will get that entire blade but what I am telling is we will not physically introduce the blade that's why what we can do is we can actually remove this portion so for that what we can do is we can make a boolean operation difference I have talked about this operation in my uh, geometry series I will put that in the description box so that you can have a look so now we have to subtract from this superset to this one and this one so if I click on build uh, selected 
build all objects then uh, we can actually etch out this particular portion now try to visualize this is the fluid and this particular part is a blade but we are not putting the exact blade but the geometry we have taken now what we can do is we can actually incorporate we can place some velocity at this wall the angular velocity and that angular velocity will impart motion uh, to the fluid and uh, that fluid will actually flow due to this motion and that logic we are going to use before we proceed let us put water in the solution space so we take water yeah water has been added now what we do is we take another wall say wall 2 and say define this blade as wall 2 now in the blade up to this point we will be having the centrifugal velocity because this velocity will be perpendicular to this line or in the x direction this is r direction in the horizontal direction so what we can do is we can actually introduce this wall movement here so for that you have to click on sliding wall not this sliding wall uh, we'll be introducing so we can see here in the uh, in the sliding wall we don't see any angular velocity option so we don't know how exactly the angular velocity needs to be added so for that what we can do is we can go to the turbulent flow and you can see there is an option inbuilt which is called swirl flow that means the rotational flow so that swirling motion we have to check and that check will create an option in the wall or the sliding wall you can see once we have checked we can get an option of velocity of moving wall the phi component that means the angular component so here we can introduce a certain velocity in terms of say radian per second so let me define it in parameter say this is omega so let us define a reasonable value say 0 0.50 radian per second now at wall 2 what we can do we can make omega multiplied by r because you know this velocity is equal to omega r and those are defined here at wall 1 we have no sleep condition so by default we have taken symmetry here now as there is no inlet though no outlet what we need to do is we need to define a pressure point constraint I have mentioned it in my all videos that whenever you don't have any inlet and outlet and you are solving fluid flow we should define a certain point which is called pressure point constraint so now I guess most of the things are already defined let us let us create the mesh yeah this mesh is fine and I hope the simulation should run let's see what happens so it will take some time so meanwhile I would like to make an announcement that we have initiated a service where we help researchers developing their model with ComSol Multiphysics. If you want to avail this service, write to me in the email ID given in the description box and I will make some, I will I'll, I'll reply back to you, arrange some video call and I will help you out. Many people have taken this particular service and they got benefited. So you can also avail this service if you want. So you can see the simulation is almost over it will take another 30 second maybe so let's wait for another 30 second yeah this simulation is over you can see how the velocity is 
I mean, uh, this sliding wall incorporated a velocity to the fluid and you can see as the radius is increasing, we have higher velocity and the it should be because the velocity is equal to omega into r. Now we can actually plot the streamlines. Okay, let us just look at not the streamline. Let us right click on velocity, try to plot arrow lines, arrow surface velocity. Yeah, so you can see there is a motion. If I zoom it here, you can see there is a turbulence swirling motion and that is coming due to this centrifugal force. You can also see the same in 3D and in 3D also we can introduce this arrow surfaces arrow volume you can, uh, you can see yeah this arrow line we can choose yeah you can see how exactly the velocity vectors are around this is basically for u and v let us try to plot something else. Say arrow surface. If we plot this, yeah, it will show the flow vectors. And you can see how exactly it is coming out of the. I mean, this is the blade you can imagine. And the blade is pushing a velocity that is normal to it and that's why those normal vectors are being shown. So here you can see we have not introduced any moving mesh but uh, we can actually solve for the fluid flow. So if you have this kind of situation you can actually put the force into your fluid flow and then you can actually get rid of the complicated moving mesh. So today I stop here. I would like to request you to subscribe to our channel so that we get more motivation to upload videos.